Hi, Kevin. This is the first video that I've done that is directed at another YouTube reviewer, and I'm a little nervous. Form BX257 is the best top-notch numero uno G.I. Joe toy reviewer on YouTube. Almost a year ago, Kevin put up a top 10 video, and he encouraged other G.I. Joe reviewers to do the same. Well, I didn't, because at the time, my channel was still really small, and I wasn't sure I even had enough stuff to make a decent top 10 list. Well, now I'm finally ready to answer the call and do my own top 10 list in response to Form BX257. I'm still not sure I have enough stuff to do the kind of top 10 list that I'd really like to do. Also, I have a really hard time deciding what should be in the top 10. Every time I make a top 10 list, I, I want to change it. I think of other things that I need to have in the top 10, and really I can end up with 20 items in the top 10. Now, I'm no mathematician, but I'm pretty sure that doesn't add up. This is Hooded Cobra Commander's Top 10 Vehicles slash playsets that I currently own, which could change at any time. Number 10, the 1985 Cobra Moray Hydrofoil. I did not have a Cobra Moray when I was a kid, but a friend had it, so I did get to play with it, and this thing is a beast. It is just loaded with features, uh, lots of guns, even hidden weapons. I love the color scheme, I love the design. It looks like it's really built for speed, um, and it really looks like it could be a rival uh, to G.I. Joe's Hovercraft Killer Whale. Number 9, the 1983 Dragonfly Helicopter. The Dragonfly is an amazing helicopter and it feeds my hunger for realistic military vehicles in the G.I. Joe line. I loved this thing as a kid. It looks great. Uh, it's got a pilot, uh, Wild Bill, uh, that's a really interesting and fun character. And this is one of the first vehicles that I went after as an adult collector and I just love having the thing. Number 8, the 1983 G.I. Joe Headquarters Command Center. Excluding the 1982 Sears exclusive Cobra Missile Command Headquarters, this 1983 G.I. Joe Headquarters was their first real playset. I did have this as a kid, and it was amazing. I loved it. It's loaded with play features. It has space for the vehicles. It has a, an elevator for the vamp. It has a landing pad for the dragonfly. It has plenty of space for figures. It has a nice arm utilitarian look and I just love this thing and it's a great display piece it even works better for an adult collector as a display piece uh, a centerpiece for all of your other 1982 and 1983 figures and vehicles number seven the 1986 GI Joe Tomahawk helicopter the Tomahawk takes everything that's great about the Dragonfly and cranks it up to 11. It is huge, it's got plenty of weapons, it can serve as a troop carrier, it has a great color scheme, and it's a nice uh, pseudo-realistic military vehicle, which was coming, becoming pretty rare that late in the line. Uh, in fact, the only downside I would say would be the pilot lift ticket. I'm not a big fan of lift ticket, and if the Tomahawk uh, had a better pilot, it might even be higher on the list. Number six, the 1984 Cobra Stinger. There isn't much original about the Cobra Stinger. It is really just a reuse of one of my other favorite vehicles, the Vamp, uh, with a recolored Cobra Officer as a driver, but it's done in black, which was my favorite color for a Cobra vehicle. And it looks absolutely gorgeous in black. Uh, and those red missiles add this the perfect splash of color. Uh, really, this thing is just so gorgeous that even though it's really not a very original vehicle, I can't resist it, it just looks that good. Number five, the 1982 G.I. Joe Vamp. I can't put the Cobra Stinger on this list without putting the original Vamp ahead of it. Uh, this thing, I think, is the best vehicle of that first series of G.I. Joe uh, in 1982. Even though the Mobat tank was bigger and motorized, I kind of like the Vamp because it isn't motorized. It's a smaller vehicle, but it's all business. It has a great driver clutch, and of all of the different versions and variations on the Vamp, the the first one is still my favorite. I love that classic green and I love that machine gun. Uh, definitely my favorite version of the vamp. 
Number four, the 1983 Sky Striker. In 1983, we finally got our first jet, and it was amazing. It was big, it had a ton of features, it had parachutes, it had missiles, it had that cool sweep wing design with the mechanism that lowered the landing gear, uh, and it was modeled after one of my favorite real-world jets, uh, the Grumman F-14 Tomcat. Uh, and I know that we've had a lot of other great jets in the G.I. Joe line, but in my mind, nothing tops the first one. They really went all out to give us a top-notch jet in 1983. Number three, the 1983 Cobra Hiss Tank. I really struggled with where to put the Hiss Tank on this list because it doesn't fit with any of my usual preferences. It is not a realistic military vehicle, uh, but it embodies the essence of Cobra. It is sleek, it is stylized, it is futuristic, and it is black. And all of those things together make for an iconic design. And because this really is uh, the go-to Cobra vehicle for me, uh, it has to make it to the top three. Number two, the 1985 USS Flag. It's in there. It goes without saying that the USS Flag is huge. It impresses for size, if for nothing else. Uh, even if you don't know anything about this thing, if you see it, you will be impressed. You can put so many uh, airplanes and helicopters and figures on it. It makes a fantastic display, uh, and I love owning it. Uh, just owning one will make a lot of other G.I. Joe collectors jealous. Uh, and since this is probably the best playset ever made, as well as the largest, it's very tempting to put the this at number one on the list but there is one vehicle that I truly love above all others and that had to be number one number one the 1984 G.I. Joe hovercraft the killer whale. Of course, it had to be the killer whale. This thing is beautiful. I love the army green color. It's big. It can hold a ton of figures. It has lots of play features and weapons. Uh, it has two sub vehicles and it can float. You can do so much with this thing and it can actually fit on a shelf. So unlike the USS flag, it's much easier to find a place to display it. Uh, this thing looks great on the shelf. I'm so happy to have mine. This is the vehicle that I loved so much I had to marry it. There you have it. Hooded Cobra Commander's top 10 vehicles slash playsets that I currently own, uh, which could change at any time. Uh, it was so hard to leave some things off the list. There are a lot, so many things that I wanted to add on the list, but this will do for now. Uh, now I want to ask the viewers, what would your top 10 list be? You can leave a comment telling me what your top 10 list would be, or make your own video. I would love to see it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check out this channel for vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews and if you're watching my videos it's very unlikely that you don't already know about Form BX257 but if you don't make sure you subscribe to his channel too that channel is a lot better than this one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.